well, kind of stinks. And when it is stuck to the bottom of your shoe, it might not occur to you to be grateful for the opportunity. But some researchers happen to like poo, or more specifically, the stuff in it, because it has a lot of stories to tell about the natural world if you know how to read them. And I'm not just talking about what an animal was munching on. Poop can tell us about everything from who an animal's hanging out with to how likely it is to have babies. All you have to do is be willing to look very, very closely at some animal droppings. Poop has some pretty great advantages when it comes to studying animals in the wild. Researchers can swoop in and take the sample without needing to get too close to the animal. Basically, it's a way to avoid bothering them too much. And one way to glean information from animal poop is by looking at the hormones it contains. These molecules are used to signal information throughout an organism's body. For example, glucocorticoid levels shoot up when animals deal with stressful events like severe weather, being around predators, or being harassed by people. In a 2017 study, researchers extracted this hormone from Cape Mountain zebra droppings, and that let them see how stressed out the animals were at different times of the year and under different social and environmental conditions. For example, in the spring before the summer rains, the zebra's glucocorticoid levels were high, and they were even higher for zebra living in areas with lower quality grass. The zebra were chronically stressed out from their poor diets. The same study also looked at the levels of the hormone testosterone in male zebra poop. In areas with more non-breeding males than females, the male zebra in herds had higher testosterone levels. Herds have one stallion who breeds with the mares in the herd, and all the other stallions form their own bachelor groups. So the researchers think the higher testosterone levels may be related to more intermale competition. And that actually is not a great thing. See, the scientists noticed that when testosterone levels were higher, the female's ability to produce offspring was lower, although they don't know why that's the case yet. Overall, poop hormones came in useful for understanding why a population of animals might be struggling, and that gives conservationists some tools to help them. But poop research goes beyond just hormones. Animals' guts are alive with the bacteria that help them digest food, their microbiome. And exactly which microbes are kicking around in there can provide a lot of information. To figure out exactly what's in the poop, researchers often use a technique called metagenomics. This is essentially grabbing the genetic material from lots of different microbes in a sample all at the same time. In a 2021 study, researchers analyzed fecal samples from griffin vultures in an attempt to figure out how they can digest rotting carrion without getting sick. And it seems like the vultures might get by with a little help from their microbial friends. The researchers identified nearly 700 enzymes made by the vultures' gut microbes. Those enzymes were found to break down toxins in their food. And we're talking about nasty stuff like Staphylococcal enterotoxin E, or AB5 toxins. And in humans, those can cause food poisoning and lead to the symptoms of cholera and whooping cough. The researchers then made 15 of those enzymes in the lab so they could test if they actually do break down the toxins. They put those enzymes on a fancy chip together with pieces of the proteins from the toxic substances in carrion, and then they monitored the results as the enzymes broke them down. This approach of looking at all the bacteria together helped them paint a bigger picture than chasing down species of bacteria one by one. Poop can even tell us about the social structure of the animals that pooped it. In a 2015 study, researchers were able to sort 48 baboons into two different troops living in different parts of the savanna, and they did so by looking at the type and number of bacteria in each individual's poop. But this was not a function of what they were eating. Instead, it depended on which baboon was grooming whom. See, baboons who spent more time grooming each other had more similar gut bacteria. The researchers suggest that might be because the animals are transferring bacteria from the groomy to their mouths when they go and lick their hands in between grooming bouts. This is a little bit gross, but in fairness, baboons don't have sinks. It does, however, mean that the closer the individuals are to one another, the more often they interact with each other, and the more often they swap stomach residents, leaving a trail for the researchers to untangle. This kind of research is so widespread that one group of scientists have created a poop database to reference. The database contains the genomes of more than 1,200 bacteria found in the poop of more than 180 different species from all over the world. The scientists who developed the database hope it will be used to better understand the ecology of different animals and to keep an eye on potential disease-causing microbes. Poop is a humble research but a powerful one in our efforts to help conserve animals and their habitats. And it is all thanks 
to what they leave behind. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thanks to this month's President of Science, Matthew Brandt. Your support means a lot to us, and it truly does make these videos possible. If you'd like to support us, too, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow.